it's day two of a very tool Christmas and as you can see it's uh, still not very festive at the moment. So we got off to a really good start with a lovely fruity pale ale and we're behind door number two today so let's find out what today's beer is. <laughs> So indeed, it is the Tuol Goes to Hollywood, which is a ghost star beer, uh, brewed with uh, oranges, I believe. Let me just get this uh, description on the back. Tuol got starstruck. This is how we went to Hollywood. Salty sour like ghost, brewed with the best fruits California can offer, best consumed on warm summer days. And... Uh, Best before date on this one is the 3rd of the 5th, 2020. So, uh, let's see, it goes brewed with oranges. Now, this is a beer that um, I've already had, so I'm not going to be spending too much time on this uh, review today. The link to the original review will be down below. But, uh, yeah, I think this is actually one of my first, if not the first, two old beer that I actually reviewed on the channel. Uh, a couple of years ago now when I was living in Germany and uh, picked up from the, the wonderful shop that is Beretta which I very much look forward to visiting next time I am in Regensburg and I remember being absolutely blown away by this because I'd not really had too many Goes style beers at that point uh, it's amazing how far I've come in such a short amount of time I don't mean in that like an arrogant, oh look at me, I'm absolutely fantastic sort of way, but uh, I never would have thought that this sort of beer would be one of my favourites. But yeah, a fruited goes. <sighs> absolutely fantastic. Let's believe it's artwork. Wonderful once again. It's got that sort of uh, television test card behind uh, some sort of, almost looks like a cloud formation. Very abstract. But uh, yeah, lovely label on the neck. And I'm liking these new crowns and two old with the uh, the squiggle on there. So of course, brand appropriate glassware. I won't make a mention of that in every video. So let's get this opened and see what we get. So we've got another pale beer. I hope it's not one of those things where by chance I actually just go through all of the pale beers consecutively and then towards the end of December it's just going to be the, the darker higher ABV ones but uh, yeah the ABV actually for this beer uh, is 3.8% so uh, a lovely light sessionable beer and a uh, lovely haze to it. I actually can't remember um, too much specifically about the beer uh, since the first time I've had it. All I remember is, I thought it was really damn good. Nice and cloudy. Uh, it's definitely got that sort of like orangey amber look to it. Uh, you can just about see through there. Um, but yeah, one about, well, about half a finger's worth of a lovely white head. Uh, it looks really nice and refreshing. Almost like a slightly um, overly watered orange concentrate. Anyway, so let's see what we get in the nose. Definitely get those oranges in there. And it does smell like you've got orange and then salt sprinkled on top. Sort of like what you do with other with fruits and sprinkle sugar on. But yeah, lovely salty, sort of like oh, rock salt aroma. But yeah, it complements the orange beautifully. It's like putting salt in a cake. It just amplifies the other flavours. Yeah, lovely, light, bready. Uh, multi-tone as well. Just smells so crisp already, do you know what I mean? Anyway, without any further ado, let's get into this one. Cheers, guys. Oh, 
that's good. That is really good. As I said, compared to the first time I had it, I wouldn't really be able to go head to head because I didn't have the the foresight to uh, re revisit that review. I can't can't speak today, and I can't even use proper words in those sentences. Hmm. It's got a really bold flavour for such a low ABV, and that's in the body as well. It is crisp, but you wouldn't think you're drinking a 3.8, was it a 3.2? Yeah, 3.8, you would not think you were drinking just a 3.8% beer. Mm. And yeah, the orange flavour is just so spot on. And you get this light saltiness in the background. Lovely sweet well, aftertaste as well. Almost has like the sort of very subtle flavour of like candied orange peel or like little candied orange segments <laughs> but yeah perfect this is like give me a keg of this next summer and I'll be a happy chappy indeed but I suppose orange is uh, a fairly common flavour in Christmas cuisine so I think this would probably pair well with a nice Christmas pudding if you're into Christmas puddings I personally find them to be the most bland of puddings, but that's just me. Yeah, it's got a very subtle spiciness as well to it. So uh, it's not just orange and salt. There's actually some nice subtle complexities to it. But it's not too puckering. So if you wanted to get into these sorts of beers, I definitely think the inclusion of orange in there makes it a little bit more accessible. But even if you're a massive fan of the style, this is an absolutely wonderful example, and um, mm, nice, nice sort of like lemon sherbet flavour going on there as well. So uh, yeah, two out of two, both have been great beers. Uh, for me personally, I would give this probably a nine out of ten. I'm not sure what I'd give it to put that up to a ten out of ten. Um, maybe actually. A little bit more puckering I want a little bit more tartness to it do you know what I mean and it's almost gone already it's just so wonderfully drinkable so if you've tried this one then let me know your thoughts opinions down below what's some of your favorite ghost style beers uh, not just from too old but also in general uh, if you want to hear what my initial thoughts were regarding this beer the link will be included down below check out my tour playlist check out the uh, to our Christmas playlist, which I'm obviously in the middle of creating. And I think it's about time that we find out what number we will be drinking tomorrow. And I've just realised the stein with the paper in there is actually on the shelf. So, um... Okay, so we've got it here. The wonderful metal stein of decision. I will hopefully come up with a, a better name for this. So we'll give it a bit of a shake and we'll see what number we will be doing tomorrow. And hopefully I can open the bloody calendar easily. It, that's two days out of two which I've rarely struggled to get the doors open because I'm using one hand because I'm filming with the other. Anyway, first world problems. So let's get deep. And tomorrow's number will be 14. But, just like yesterday, you'll have to find out tomorrow what beer we'll be drinking. And hopefully I can speak properly. Anyway, thank you for watching and uh, I hope you are as excited as tom for tomorrow as I am. I'm so lonely.